Hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the sample player on the Tractor Control S4 Mark III. Now, to make sure you get all of the videos from Digital DJ Tips straight to your inbox, hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon so we can send you a notification as soon as our videos go live. Right, let's get into it, shall we? So the Tractor Control S4 Mark III from Native Instruments, a big overhaul on the previous model, and they've completely changed the way that you play samples on this controller. Most importantly, it does not give you full control over Tractor's remix decks. Um, they've kind of done away with that on this. What they've focused on is what DJs have been feeding back to Native Instruments on, which is that they really just want to use samples for one shots, DJ drops, and to make drum beats and that kind of stuff. So it's utilizing the remix decks that were already baked into the software to create a very simple sample player. And it is quite simple. So I'm going to show you those two ways, making some beats and also some DJ drops. So let's start off over here on this deck. Now I've got a track loaded up here on deck A. Okay, and then when I hit the samples button, now I've got access over other slots, but they look empty at the moment. So how do we get some samples in there? So first of all, in the software, you need to make sure that your decks C and D are showing, and also that they are selected as remix decks. So you can see all of the slots here waiting for samples. And also while we're here, just another little bit of housekeeping on remix decks, in behaviors, I found that having all three of these ticked is important. Only enable deck play on sample trigger, one shot samples ignore punch mode, and one shot samples ignore quantize mode. So I've got some drum sounds here, so let's load these up onto these slots. I've got a kick, I've got a snare, I've got a clap, and I've got an open hi-hat. Okay, so if I start playing those, you can see them playing on the screen, but we can't hear anything yet. And that's because the sample player comes up through the deck C channel. Okay, so there's our drum beats. All right, so we can play our drums and of course we can play that over the other track. So I still have control of the main deck with this play pause button and the, and the jog wheel. But now I can play my pattern over the top. Cool, so the volume is controlled by this. Uh, I can put effects across the whole of the channel for the samples, uh, whatever I want to do with EQ and what have you. Um, so that's pretty cool to be able to play drums over the top as one shots. It's very important that all the samples are um, set as one shots so like you can see here this little blue arrow means this is a one shot that would be a loop that's a one shot and also this here determines whether it plays to the end or whether you just uh it will only play for as long as you've got your finger on the button so we've got our, our sounds there what else can we actually do with these here well we've got some control over the volume and also the filter of each of these sounds so if i hold down the button underneath the sample you can see that's the volume and that's the filter level for it so if i play it I'm going to adjust the filter. So you can play around with that a bit, but the main use I would say for this is volume because this one is quite loud in comparison to the other ones. So actually with that, I would like to turn that down to about halfway. And now let's have a listen to my pattern. Yeah, that sounds better. That was a bit too loud, that hi-hat. So you've got that little bit of control. So what about the record button here? Well, this will record a four beat loop with whatever you do whilst you've got record enabled. It's not very long, but you can at least make a little drum pattern that you can play over your other track. So let's give it a go. I'm just gonna go back to hot cue. Go into record. I'm gonna turn the main track down a bit so you can hear it. Now I've got my kick drum playing. Okay, so now I've got that little four beat pattern playing. If I want to mute some of the sounds, I can hold down this button here.
Now remember to switch it out of record. Now the thing is, is that that deck is now playing with that loop. So if, if I switch over to deck C, I do that to stop the deck. Now the thing is, if I play any sample again now, it's going to start playing that loop. Okay, so the way to stop that, if you don't want the loop there anymore, is to just hit shift, hit all those four buttons, and now we're just back to having the sounds and we can play them over the deck. All right, so there you go. It's relatively simple. It's not too uh, um, feature packed, if you like, but you've got a decent amount of control over some drum hits there. And of course you can put any particular sounds that you want in. So let's now talk about DJ drops. Um, and we're gonna move over to this deck to do it. We're gonna use exactly the same principle. So I've got here my DJ samples. I've got a few samples saved in here. So let's do the same thing. Pick them up, drag them onto a slot. And let's have a listen to these sounds over here. Do it, do it. And uh, I can get my track playing. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Now, of course, whilst you've got the sample button pressed, but you're controlling the main uh, deck of deck B, I have no control over those samples other than with the buttons. But if at any time you switch over to the actual sample playing deck, now I can actually scratch and manipulate the sound. Okay, but uh, when we're in this mode, we're just playing them over the other track. All right, so you can, again, you can put whatever DJ drops you want in there, your own name, whatever it is, and the same rules apply with uh, the volume controls and also the ability to uh, add, change the filter and the volume of the individual sounds. Now, what about if you wanna quickly grab a sample from somewhere else and put it onto the deck? Now, this is something that used to be uh, a main feature of the previous controllers where you could actually really easily capture loops and samples from other sources and put them onto slots. You can do it, but it's, it's not as easy. Uh, you have to use the trackpad and the software to do it, but it is possible. Let me give you an example here. So, in my track here. And I support it, kind of like a brawl word, because I feel I should, you know? And if you're ready to shake that, let's go. I like that little let's go sample. So I'm gonna create a loop with that, and I'm gonna use the in and out points here on the screen. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm just going to make that a bit tighter so that the start of the loop is right at the very beginning of that sound. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, and then I'm going to pick up the title from the deck header and drag it down and drop it onto the slot. Now you have to click here, make sure that it's not set to loop so that it's to one shot. Switch off sync so that uh, the, you can play the buttons freely and then decide here whether you want it to play all the way to the end or just for as long as you've got your finger on the button. I like it to play all the way to the end. And let's have a listen to that sample. Let's, 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 let's go. Let's go. So now it's there in my bank with my other one. Do it. Let's go, let's go. And if I play that over my track. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. So there you go, two useful ways of getting samples working for you on the Tractor Control S4 Mark III. Uh, if you've got any more questions, make sure you let us know in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you again for another one soon. And don't forget, get good, get out there, create the moments. See you soon.